Have you ever played with a magnet and noticed something strange? It snaps eagerly onto a paper clip or the side of a refrigerator. Yet when you bring it close to a coin, a spoon, or a shiny piece of aluminum foil, nothing happens. It feels almost selective, as if the magnet has preferences. This everyday curiosity leads to a deeper question that many of us never stop to ask. Why are magnets attracted to some metals only and not all of them? Today, we're going to unpack that mystery in a way that feels less like a physics lecture and more like a story hiding inside the objects around us, right here on History of Simple Things. At first glance, it seems logical to assume that magnets should stick to all metals. After all, metals are strong, solid, and often used in machines, tools, and electronics. But magnetism doesn't care whether something is shiny, heavy, or expensive. Instead, it cares about what's happening on a microscopic level, far beyond what our eyes can see. To understand magnetism, we need to zoom in, way in, into the world of atoms. Everything around us is made of atoms, and inside those atoms are even smaller particles called electrons. These electrons don't just sit still. They move, spin, and create tiny magnetic fields of their own. You can think of each electron as a minuscule bar magnet with a north and south pole. In most materials, these tiny magnetic fields point in all sorts of random directions. They cancel each other out, and the object as a whole doesn't behave like a magnet at all. However, some materials are different. In certain metals, many of these tiny magnetic moments naturally line up in groups called domains. When a magnet comes close, it can force even more of these domains to align in the same direction. When enough of them line up, the object suddenly becomes strongly attracted to the magnet. This is the hidden reason magnets feel so powerful when they grab onto specific metals. The metals that magnets are famously attracted to fall into a small and special category. Iron is the most well-known, but it's not alone. Nickel and cobalt also share this magnetic behavior. These metals are called ferromagnetic materials. The word may sound complicated, but it simply refers to substances whose atomic structure allows their magnetic domains to line up easily and stay that way. Iron is everywhere in our daily lives, which is why magnetism feels so familiar. Steel, for example, is mostly iron mixed with small amounts of other elements. That's why magnets stick to refrigerators, car bodies, nails, screws, and many tools. Even though steel doesn't look like raw iron, its atomic structure still allows magnetic domains to form and respond strongly to magnets. Now let's talk about metals that don't respond the same way. Aluminum, copper, gold, and silver are all metals, yet magnets barely notice them. That doesn't mean these materials completely ignore magnetism. Their electrons still have magnetic properties, but the way those electrons are arranged prevents strong domain alignment. The magnetic effects exist, but they're so weak that you'd need extremely sensitive equipment to detect them. Take aluminum as an example. It's lightweight, conductive, and used in everything from soda cans to airplanes. When you bring a magnet close, nothing dramatic happens. That's because aluminum's electrons don't form stable magnetic domains. Any tiny magnetic response disappears almost instantly once the magnet is removed. The attraction is simply too weak for us to feel. Copper behaves similarly. It's excellent at carrying electricity, which often confuses people. If electricity and magnetism are connected, shouldn't copper be magnetic? The connection does exist, but it's more subtle. Copper's atomic structure doesn't support the kind of electron alignment needed for strong magnetism. That's why copper wires don't stick to magnets, even though they play a huge role in electrical systems.
This brings us to an important point. Being magnetic and being conductive are not the same thing. A material can conduct electricity very well and still not be attracted to magnets. Likewise, a strongly magnetic metal like iron doesn't conduct electricity as efficiently as copper. These properties depend on different aspects of how electrons behave inside a material. Another interesting detail is that not all iron-based objects are equally magnetic. Stainless steel is a great example. Some stainless steel utensils stick to magnets while others don't. That's because stainless steel comes in different types. Some contain crystal structures that allow magnetic domains to form, while others don't. Even though they all contain iron, their internal arrangements change how they respond to magnets. Temperature also plays a role in magnetism. Heat makes atoms vibrate more intensely, which can disrupt the alignment of magnetic domains. If a ferromagnetic material gets hot enough, it can lose its magnetism entirely. There's a specific temperature for this, known as the Curie point. Above this temperature, the material behaves as if it were non-magnetic, even though its atomic makeup hasn't changed. Magnets themselves are made by forcing magnetic domains to align permanently. In an unmagnetized piece of iron, domains point in random directions. When it's exposed to a strong magnetic field during manufacturing, many of those domains line up and stay aligned. That's what turns ordinary metal into a permanent magnet capable of attracting other objects. It's also worth mentioning that magnetism isn't limited to attraction. In some materials, magnets actually cause a weak repulsion. This effect is usually too small to notice in everyday life, but it exists in almost all substances to some degree. The reason we don't see it often is because ferromagnetic attraction is so much stronger that it steals the spotlight. So when you ask why magnets are attracted to some metals only, the real answer lies in the invisible architecture of matter. It's not about hardness, weight, or appearance. It's about whether a material's electrons can work together, line up, and amplify their tiny magnetic effects into something we can see and feel. If you enjoyed this video, please check out our other bingeable channels. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the history of simple things. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and stay tuned for more stories woven through the smallest details.